All right, my name is Aaron Rhodes, and you are listening to the Shuttlecock Podcast. We are sponsored by the Vinyl Underground at 7th Heaven, offering new and used vinyl at 76 and Troost in Kansas City, Missouri. Today on the show, we have Joe Stanziola, also known as Secondhand King. How you doing? Good, good. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Happy to have you. Thank you. Um, if anyone is interested, um, I did guest on uh, Joe's uh, Secondhand City podcast. Secondhand City! Uh, about like almost a year ago, sponsored by maybe Hams. at least six months ago. Sponsored by sponsored Hams. by. Yeah. Uh, well, we, none of our sponsors are real. Yeah, uh, Hot Box Cookies. We've been giving them free promotion for about three months, for, forever since we started. Mm. Uh, so I respect that you actually have sponsors and real, real people. No, oh, yeah. Uh, that being said, <laughs> uh, sponsored by Hot Box Cookies. Yeah, let's Shop just get let's get yeah, the sponsorship. Send, send me some cookies. I, I sent them an up. email and they replied. Oh uh, man, ooh, maybe Canes would be tight too. Uh, to that whole anything in the Westport area would be nice. Just well, send us some free. Yeah. Are you not are you, are you not a Caniac, Joe? No, I am a Caniac. That's that's, that's good. Don't, to know. don't get me wrong. I love some Canes, but I, you know, in this house we are Caniacs. I saw. I, there's a Caniac. There's a Cane. When I was walking up, there yeah, was we're, a. We're not posers. No, this is. Re- I mean, there's <laughs> hot sauce packets. In front of the house, <laughs> you know. Yeah, this is this shit's real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> but to get to the actual real <laughs> shit, um, you have a new album out that came out in June called Frankie. Yep. And that's your sixth full length release as Secondhand King. Yeah, I, I mean, I have I have one one album called the Santa Sangre EP. Mm. Uh, so I guess that EP. So yeah. yeah. Sixth. Oh yeah. So when? What was the f- like? F- when, what year did you start doing Secondhand King? Um, I started in two thousand eight, mm. and what I what I what I did initially coming up is I would like just hit up every single producer I could find, and just buy. I have just a huge file of beats on my computer. And I would just just have a just a laundry list of, of beats from producers, and I just started like like I've had I've just had millions of beats, so I've made millions of albums, and I mean that's before I was mm. getting ahead of myself, but you know, so like. Is that still kind of just the approach you take, like just, or do you like really focus in more on your albums nowadays? Like I, I, like, you know, you have a specific like process and set of ideas that you want to. It's definitely changed. I mean, that's why I have like seven things. Mm. You know, I think, and I think, Frankie, Frankie was more like this is this is exactly what I want. Um, but oddly enough, there are two beats on there that I bought when I was like in 2009. So, you know, I'm just just a hoarder. Yeah, you it's know, been a been a long time coming for those those beats. <laughs> do, you, I don't, do, you, do you keep them organized pretty well then, or no. did you just like stumble across these? You're like, oh, I forgot I had these. Well, I just I, I feel something like mm-hmm. I feel like a an emotion or something, and I'm like, okay, I have to get this out somehow. And sometimes it's just like, okay, I like this now, mm. you know. So I just I'm a hoarder, mm. Aaron, and I'm a I'm a jabroni. <laughs> do do can do people look straight at the camera? Uh, not usually, but if you what have if a I certain point you want to drive home, you you're free to do so. I am a hoarder. <laughs> man, this is I guess man, all all of your problems just come out when you <laughs> when you speak into a microphone. I feel right? way like, more comfortable right now. Yeah. Why and is I, that? that's a disorder, I'm sure. <laughs> Cause like there's a camera and there's a microphone and it's being recorded, but I feel like I'm much more confident. Mm. You know? I don't know what that is. Yeah. I forgot what we were getting at when I guessed it on Secondhand City, but we definitely delved into by mistake really some personal things of yours i feel like maybe well, that happens <laughs> a lot but i just really get people in my apartment so we can talk about my problems mm. that's what secondhand city has been yeah it's just free um, free therapy yeah yeah and i'm looking forward to turning this into that as well, well so we're off, we're off to a great start <laughs> i think 
Uh, but yeah, like what? So you you bill yourself kind of on Bandcamp and like other social media and stuff as the original doo wop rapper. When like did you know like right off the bat when you started releasing stuff like that was what you wanted to go for? No, I mean, initially, I just wanted to make hip-hop. Like, I just wanted to specifically make something that... Because, like, I, I I, mean, I still listen to Pusha T's new album, Daytona. And, like, it's just... There's just, like, this grittiness that hip-hop has that I just can't shake. Um, so, initially, like, that's that's where I came from, and that's how I started. But at the same time, like if I would have even attempted to put out, like, a Daytona project, that would be so fake and, like, not me. You, so, you never sold Coke? I never sold Coke, oh, okay. Coke, no. In fact, I've only done Coke a handful of times. Mm. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> um, no, but I, I think... I think for me, like, the doo-wop part of it, it's just, like, it makes sense. If you know me, you know that, like, I'm just, like, a... Like, that's just kind of who I am. So when I heard it, when I first, like, really got into doo-wop music, I was like, okay, so this is who I am. This is what I feel. How do I connect these two and be this guy? Mm -hmm. So did you kind of grow up on that type of music, or is that something you kind of discovered on your own, like? Well, it started, I mean, I'm from the suburbs. Uh, I have a few years on you. Um, so back in my day, <laughs> Ooh, got me there. <laughs> Can you so, I'm that, saying that, that feel now? good? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't, Aaron, as much as you think it would, it doesn't. Uh, we, I, I started out with Limp Biscuit. Mm. as great place to start. Cringy as that is. No, they're great. <laughs> yeah, they're great. No, I've, I've been like on a big, like new metal kick lately. It's a lot of fun. Oh, really? Yeah. You know? Slipknot, you call Limp corn. Biscuit new metal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, but what really I got from that album was the Red Man, uh, the Red Man feature. And then I got deeper with Eminem. You know, that happened. Mm. And then I got even deeper with Tupac. And Tupac is where I like fell in love. That's where I was like, all right, fuck, this is like an expression that is so honest and it's like so real and so passionate and so driven. Like that's what I want to do. Uh, and then Kanye kind of progressed it. So that, that's just kind of how I, I grew up on like Kanye and like Tupac. And um, I, I did stop listening to Limp Biscuit after I discovered Tupac. Mm-hmm. So I got better. Maybe, maybe you'll make your way back there one, one I day. I hope so. You know, we're all rooting for you. I mean, that'll that'll be my like my funeral song. Mm. I did it all for the nookie. That's you know what what more do you want out of life? You know, that's, that's what a lot of people do it for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right, that's the end of the <laughs> podcast. It's been real. Thank you for having you know, me. We're just out here to spread knowledge about um, Limp Biscuit, and that, you know that's the main goal of the Limp Biscuit the awareness show. Mm. is super underrated. Um, you know, yeah, we, we could do like a PSA. That'd be a yeah. good use of do you time, do drugs? I Never. Camera off. D. <laughs> I'm asking because I would I would like to know if. I want to kind of get into microdosing. <laughs> I I I'm I'm not the one to help you with that. I'm okay. I'm cheering for you, but maybe I know a guy. Maybe okay. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It just came to my head. I don't know. Next question. <laughs> 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 All right. Cool. <laughs> it just seems like a good idea. Yeah. Do you think it'd help with your creative process and? I think all so. That? Yeah. You know. I hear it helps with depression. No, yeah, I hear, I'm sure it puts you in like a good mood and all that. And, like, and maybe it's just because I got like Barry Bonds staring at me from the corner of the room. Yeah. Are you saying Barry Bonds microdose? No, is, but is some the new way it's like pictured, raising the bar, and he's like orange. Yeah. It it looks like like if I were tripping on acid, and the, just how uninterested he is on the. 
You gotta like put a picture of it. We have to like <laughs> show them. <laughs> Anyways, maybe you can tweet that. I could. Yeah. Have you been fo- I I start. I'm starting a business on my Twitter. Oh yeah, it's pop. Okay, yeah, we have a uh, Papa Papa Second Hand Papa Second Hand Pizzeria, Pizza. located off I-35 and IKEA Way. Um, we just. Oh my god! Come on. <laughs> There's a dog. Uh, yeah, we just started, um, and we're, we're like really picking up steam. Mm-hmm. I've been using random hashtags on Twitter that's bringing people into the store. Uh, and we just eclipsed uh, $60,000 in our first week. So I'm feeling really good. Yeah, and you, you can tell you really uh, love your customers. I do. I absolutely love my customers. I didn't have a mu- I didn't have this before Papa Secondhand King's Pizzeria, and I just feel like people feel more comfortable around me, except for kids. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is your podcast. This isn't my podcast. Look at I'm just taking <laughs> over. No, I'm interested in hearing uh, about your your pizza entrepreneurship and I don't know how to handle social media. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I I like I hardly have time to shit post like like you can tell like I need to be working on something by like how much I'm like shit posting on Twitter. Like, Facebook, I just completely forego now, aside from, like, like event pages and stuff. Do people like, still it's just, use Facebook? They really do, and it's wild to me, because it's just so, like, bloated, and yeah, there's too much stuff on there. I don't know what, I don't know what people are looking for mm. on Facebook. Like, I, I would love to, like, I just feel like there's no connection, you know, on Facebook. Yeah, think about that, Zuckerberg. Yeah, you Zuckerberg. why aren't people connecting anymore? No, uh, no, man, like, and just like you're just like, it's just a barrage of like shareable videos now. Like that's all it is. Like, and I, yeah. it makes sense because there's like money in that due to the ads that can throw on them. But like, it's just not fun to use. At so how do you point. find events? Uh, just, like, by being friends and, like, following people that book them and just, like, checking their pages, I guess, so. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, so. Getting some, some marketing ideas here. Well, I mean, I just, like, I don't, I use Facebook, like, a mailing list. Yeah. Like, I just, and then occasionally, every once in a while, I'll say something that I'm, like, feeling mm. that's, like, kind of funny. Or I'll ask for help with something, and... That's the thing I like about Twitter is that Twitter I can like connect directly with people. And when I made and when I first opened up the pizzeria, um, people like I got like six text messages. And I don't get that much response. And I think there's still like and this is my problem with Instagram too. And Instagram's like the new thing, right? And it's like I I don't know what to post. Instagram inherently makes me like anxious because I think I think a lot of people want to tell their tell a story like and it's always bullshit, mm-hmm. you know. So I just I don't know how to handle social media, and maybe you do. I don't know. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's too like. I'm sure a lot of people have that kind of. Uh, challenge that they face and like I don't know like yeah it is it is lame that like as someone in like a creative field that you have to basically use it at this point yeah so yeah there's a lot of different ways to go about it but yeah I don't know I don't think I'm any expert in that I just think I want to know I mean is there anyone that you know that like does well with it like Uh who do you who do you enjoy do you enjoy like just from like uh like a publishing standpoint or just like no, a, just a personality you, just, yeah just personality wise man i like i mean all the like like both of the guys from bodega boys they're always fun I, oh man yeah. i remember when i was on your show you were like who's that so i checked them out oh yeah you have yeah, you have yeah, seen them yeah, now yeah, yeah. they're okay. cool they're great oh yeah they're always good on twitter and like but they're like honest they're like 
and they have a platform that's oh like, yeah and they've like just branded themselves so well that's you know it I'm, yeah it sounds stupid to like say that about people like but I get like, what they, you're they saying, know though. they know who they are and they know how to write a funny tweet that relates to their upbringing and their their city and their personality and all that so yeah, yeah. they I think they do a good and that's why they 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 have a showtime show now so that's exciting and that's it you know, mm. I've I've been accused of berating people on social media, mm. and that's what not are, at what all their, what, what I are their want. names. Who are the names? Of yeah, who, who have you berated? <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't say names. No, it's cool. uh, but I I have like, and I just don't know what to post, and I'm always doing something musical. Like I I got a show most of the time, mm. or like I just really want people to hear Frankie so I will come out with a video or just like hey this is a song maybe you didn't see or didn't hear so maybe it'll catch you and it's like self-promotion and it's kind of lame but like I just don't I mean I just feel so uh dissonant from it and maybe it's like a marketing branding whatever ing issue it is but Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I feel like if people don't want to see you promote their stuff, your stuff, they shouldn't follow you. I mean, it really is that yeah. easy, I think. Like, I don't think social media is worth overthinking about. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, I'll, I'll overthink anything, Aaron. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything. We've come to learn this. Uh, but to get back to music <laughs> stuff. I'm sorry. No, no. Um, you, you wrote in the the notes online that Frankie is the album of a doo-wop singer forced into the modern world to discover love, life, and heartbreak. And I wanted to know how close, like, would you consider it, like, a concept album to an extent? Yeah, I think, Mm -hmm. like, that's sort of how I, like, hide behind an insecurity is Mm -hmm. just, I just want to call it a concept record. Yeah. So, so how much of yourself do you do you see in Frankie? Oof, there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, there it's like it's it's a variation of myself. It's like it's like an Instagram photo book of of Frankie, the idea of Frankie. Mm. I feel like it, it goes back to me feeling more comfortable in front of a camera and in front of a mic. I feel like I can be more honest with myself if I'm not directly talking about myself. Mm. I don't want to talk about myself. I don't want to talk about people. I don't want to talk about the real people. I want to talk about the people that I can feel, you know? So there's, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of me in there and that's Mm. all real. And that all comes from real. There's that Charlie Parker quote, you know, you can't play it if you haven't lived it, you know? So I don't know. Oh, and I guess that, that, that is, like, an interesting, like, quote in the means of looking at, like, even, like, a lot of modern hip-hop and, like, well, music of any type, really, I guess. Like, like everyone, I mean, maybe not everyone, but, like, a lot of people nowadays are focused on, like, oh, is, is that person, like, really a gangster? Or are they are they, like, a true country guy? Like, or did they just, like buy a cowboy hat and a pickup truck, you know, like... Well, there's this, like, fight for authenticity, I think, that everybody deals with. Mm. And this comes back to, like, social media. It's like... I've never had this much fun on Twitter until I started with my new business. Mm. Secondhand King's Pop Papa Pizzeria. Um, Which is real. Mm. It's not. But, you know, it's like for some reason there's like a breakthrough in that because everybody's very aware you know and like at the same music is the same way like what are what are drake and Pusha T even beefing about it's authenticity you know and like what what goes beyond that like that's that's why i can respect that's why every conversation i've ever had with marty from ebony tusk is like like fuck that's that's real that's why the music is what it is you know, and you can just you can just tell. And I think, I mean, if I don't, do you, I don't know if you listen to the radio occasionally. Yeah, you do listen to like ninety five point seven and ninety three. Uh, not usually like top forty, but like Hot one hundred three or like 
it's the rock station sometimes. Do you listen to 96.5 at all? Uh, occasionally. Like, and I love, I've gotten love from 96.5, mm-hmm. and I think, and not to shit on, like, but even, like, if you listen to, like, 93.3 or, like, 95.7, a lot of that stuff, and it's out of their control, I think, but a lot of that stuff, like, you listen to it, and it's just, it's just, you, I just can't feel anything. Mm. And, it, and it makes me, like, apocalyptically depressed, you know? Because mm. why the fuck do we even need to play it if it doesn't do anything? You know, and I, I think... You can you can just tell who's who's really here, mm. you know, like Aaron Alexander. You can tell that he's really here. He's really doing it, and he's really in that. Like, I could say a million names, but I don't know. Mm. Do Do you feel like pop music used to be more authentic? Are you like an old? I'm soul not that gen? guy. Yeah. No, I'm not that guy. I do think doo-wop was like a little more honest in that, like, at least it wasn't, like, trying to be something it wasn't. Mm. Uh, But, I mean, how many songs about the fucking summer do I need to hear? I know what the summer is. I know what's happening. Mm. I don't feel like I'm on on an island when I hear these songs. Mm. So what's the fucking point? Why are we even, why are we producing these things? Why is there so much money behind these things? Because they're not on the, you have to pay to get on the radio for the most part. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to pay to play the game. And it's like, why is, why is it that other than just random bullshit, when, you know? Wouldn't you say that, like, it is a type of, like, escapism then when people are singing about, like, the summertime and, like, goofy love songs and stuff like that? Yeah. Mm. And, you know, wouldn't you say that... Well, like, I was thinking while you were saying, like, that it's been more fun to use Twitter it's since been. you... I'm sorry. I can't, wow. I can't hold myself <laughs> back. It's been... That it has been... <laughs> there we go. It has been more fun to use Twitter since you created the, the Papa secondhand persona. Yeah. And now like, I'm escaping Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, you're so I'm part of the problem. See, no, I think it's it's a circular thing. Like everyone enjoys like creating either like a place in their mind where things are fun in summer all the time, or like where you're a weird like a funny pizza guy. But like, I'm aware of the joke. Yeah, and I don't you, think, you think they you, are. You think the the sheep will need to wake up. I think the sheep will need to wake up. <laughs> wake up, nerds. Fucking Alex Jones. Alex Jones, he's InfoWars guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yikes. So you, uh, that's where Secondhand City's going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kill me now, Aaron. Kill me now. But I, I think people just need to be aware of the joke. Because hmm. I think that's where I feel like it's authentic. It's like yeah. when I hear a song that... There's a song that I hear a lot I, at my day job. And it's summer time, summer time. I don't know anything else, but I know there's a rap verse in there too for no reason. Mm. And I just don't, I just like, I want to meet the people that like that song. I want to know why you like that song. And maybe I'm just a snob. But like, what, where, what are you escaping? You know? But at the same time, I, know people that play music I don't like that they escape to and I don't know I don't I, I I'm always in my head for these reasons mm. but anyways it's fine it's okay but um <laughs> how do you think you've like explored like kind of like like I don't know I haven't listened to your other albums as much as I have this one so maybe like I just wasn't like I wasn't able to catch it but like mm. have you explored like similar concepts before or like at least like another album's worth of like concept yeah i mean i think i think before the bomb drops which was the like like almost blue is just really the b-sides of before the bomb drops Mm -hmm. and before the bomb drops was like me exploring um what's like real and what happens when 
it all goes away. I think in where is the genuineness, gen, genuous, genuinicity, that's not a word. Uh, but where is, where are we being genuine in music that like makes you understand where other people are coming from? Cause like, I mean, I don't mean to get too existential, but like the human existence is like here and here and we're on this planet for like 20 minutes. So why are we not connected? And I, and I guess, I guess that's my biggest problem with ingenuine, ingenuineness mm. is that I don't feel connected and that that's where the depression comes from. And that's where, you know, and I, th- I think Frankie is a little bit about that too, in the same way, not to give it away or anything, but like, if I feel sort of out of place. Frankie feels sort of out of place. And like, what, what are we trying to understand? Mm. Oh yeah. So there are a couple like layers to the the story of like not feeling connected. Like you're saying that this, this old singer was like transported to modern times, but also, and you can't connect because of that, but, or like, yeah, the, I think, these underlying reasons. I think I'm like a related. repressed person. A little bit. Not repressed, but, like, that was the worst statement I think I ever could have made. But I think, I, think I'm like an, I think I'm, like, an old-timey person that, like, doesn't want... Um, that is trying to, like, love, love myself in a way and, like, love that so that... And I think that's where the understanding is coming from, I guess. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. No, yeah. Um, but the album opens up with the title track of Frankie, and that's a really, like, fun song. It's just, like, super punchy, and I don't know, I really like the rhythm to it. But, um, yeah, at the end, and see this also, like, I shouldn't have spent more time with the older albums, but, like, at near the end, there's, like, the, kind of the, like, the group vocals of, like, singing Frankie, Mm-hmm. And like, has was that something that like was that actually like group vocals or did you just dub a bunch of like voices over each other or? It was initially going to be like I was going to get like six people in the room, mm. uh, but it just ended up being me, Frankie, 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 just like all these, mm. all these layers. So. I just wanted to get that Broadway thing, you know? No, oh, yeah, like, I, I hadn't heard that in any of your other tracks before, and, like, I think that was a cool part of, like, extending, like, the doo-wop feel to it. So Thank you, man. No, yeah. And um, what else did I have about the album? Oh, yeah, and the, the second track, Mr. Somebody, it, like, interpolates um, In the Mood mm. by Glenn Miller. Yes. And that... Well, by... Whoever. No, yeah, whoever. I mean, we don't need... Popularized by... Popularized, but that's a public domain song. Uh, Yes. Right? I I think so. Uh, That's a public domain song, young man. Sure sure is. (laughs) (laughs) I don't don't think anyone's coming for you. Let's hope Uh, not. Yeah, no, yeah, and, like, I'm I'm sure that, like, that uh, melody has been worked into plenty of songs before, but, like, you know, the way it was kind of chopped up... I, I enjoyed that also. Like, Thank you, who man. who worked? Like, did did you do much like production work that on the album? That was Bakuda, Bakuda, mm-hmm. and I think I'm saying that right. And that was a beat that I'd had for a while. Oh yeah, uh, and I just didn't know what to do with it. And that song initially was like, I wasn't even maybe going to put it on the album, uh, and then I played it for my manager, and then he thought it was his. It was his favorite song, and. I don't know. I, I I've sort of grown to love that song. I guess. So what what was your like? Is like every song like a different producer? Are they all like local people? Like or I got Rick Mon on a few. Mm. Uh, Nick Siegel did the interludes. Uh, he just played the piano on the interludes. But other than that, uh, hopefully I'm not missing anybody. I mainly just worked with other people. Mm. Uh, Rhapsodist did Vulnerable. Um, this guy named Andre Marionette did, um, he's out of Minneapolis. Uh, he did, uh, the King of Broken Hearts and there she was. Um, so I'm just like, 
Go So Wrong was flawless. Uh, and then I, I have this really bad problem where, like, I always want to, like, work. I don't like having so many producers on stuff. I would love to just work with one person. Now that I have a band, we're going to record together, so we're going to keep it just in-house and just us. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's just, like, something I've always kind of done unknowingly, I guess. But I I think the album, like, does sound, like, surprisingly cohesive in its production being that it was done by, like, maybe ten, like, different people. Like, so... (laughs) a lot. Oh, yeah, it sounds like maybe you didn't get everyone in a room all the time, so... Yeah, well, I yeah. mean, it's it's hard to like. It's just money, man. Mm. Money is money is like the. Everybody wants money. Everybody and they everybody deserves money. I mean, I want to pay people. I just don't always. I just need to eat and live somewhere. Pop, pop a second hands communist pizza. Communist, because <laughs> Alex every, Jones. Every, every, no, everyone deserves <laughs> money and. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even think of it like that. You're going on another <laughs> level. Oh my god. Hey, Jesus! It riled up. That's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, but and and um, being like you mentioned, uh, Rick Mon has some production on the album, yeah. and like you and Dominico both, like I appreciate like how much you guys try to work with like all the intelligent sound folks too, because like they're great. That's dude. like I don't think people realize like I don't, I don't want to call them a resource, but like there's just like an um, army, a small army of like beat makers that. Like, I feel like not enough rappers, like, take advantage of, well, not, not take advantage of, but, you know, try, so talented, try to work with, yeah. You know? I mean, and Peter Anthony is one of the hardest working guys in the city. And he's somebody that you can just tell right on the instant that he's fucking authentic and, like, genuine and mm-hmm. just, just really there. And I think, like, you know, like Lion is like super talented. Uh, there's just so many talented people in Intelligent Sounds, and they all work so fucking hard. And it's like all Kansas City is missing. And one thing I appreciate about what you're doing here is like that you're giving a platform to this island because Kansas City is an island, and like ne- people aren't doing this. You know, like so I respect that. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. No, yeah, and um, I just remember you had played Boulevardia recently, mm. and they, like, a lot of the Intelligent Sound guys were involved with the, the silent disco area, too, mm. and I saw some of that popped up in your vlog, uh, <laughs> just ha- hanging out there. Have you ever done one of those before? No, I haven't been to one in person. Do you but dance? When you go out, do you? Never. Maybe really. you should. You should start, Aaron. Yeah, uh... May, may, you'll have to teach me. <laughs> well, you, that's the thing. There is no teaching. Mm. You just you just move. You got to feel it. Your body. I hear you got to move the hips. Mm, the hips. You got to move your hips. Uh, but silent disco is like. So we played at one p.m. Yeah. in the afternoon, which is very early, and it's also very like hot. So we like walk by silent disco and we're like, all right. I mean, this is a little strange. I mean, there's no music playing and it's a bunch of people dancing. But then as soon as I put on the headphones, I could, I just like, and part of this is uh, Rick Mon was did that's that's who we went and dan- but Peter Anthony was running the thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like this, like it's just so freeing. I don't know if I was like really drunk enough or just you know, but like it's just like you're in your own world like just sort of dancing and it's it's great i highly recommend it mm. oh yeah i i can imagine you got a, at boulevard you get some decent drink tickets and comps and stuff like that there's a lot of rattlers Aaron. there's a lot of rattlers and rattlers taste like soda pop mm. you know i miss the tech nine beer oh yeah the the caribou did little. you try it i have not tried it well, i went and bought it later it was like sixteen dollars yeah. for a four pack. Uh, I wasn't a fan. We're not sponsored by uh, Boulevard <laughs> uh, Brewing, um, I guess, since we're taking that stance. But oh yeah, I mean, I love Boulevard beer. <laughs> Absolutely love Boulevard. No, I really do. I, I love. I get a Tank Seven anytime I can. But I did not. 
you know, it wasn't for me. Mm. Uh, did you stick around and catch any of, did you see Tech Nine? I did not. Fest or any other bands that you're into? I did see Hilux. Mm. Hilux, oh, yeah. oh my God, that Julia, yep. her fucking voice is like from heaven. Uh, God, her, she's got a great voice. Um, I saw Hembry. Those guys are amazing, and those guys... Oh, yeah, they're really popping right now. Yeah, like, they just got signed to Domino, which is great, and, like, Isaac is super nice. He's, like, one of the nicest guys uh, that... I mean, I haven't really met him like that, but from what our communication, he's very nice. Um, who else did I see? Duncan. Duncan has a great live stage performance. Like, he just... I really like that they all jump at the same time. Um... <laughs> <laughs> incorporate some jumps into your next uh, set. It sounded so condescending. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I, the music, it's all right, but they jump. It's they great. They jump at the same time. So, <laughs> But no, like they're super tight. And um, it, that's the thing about Kansas City. It's like there's just so many hidden little talent. Like I was at record. I was telling you before I got here, yeah. before we filmed, is that I it was just that We the People Fresh to Death with Eddie Moore and 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 Leonard Destroy and Zach Morrow and uh, fuck I forgot Dominique Sanders and like those those guys like they are just so fucking talented and it's just the most fun and it's just like there's just so many people like that that are just so talented yeah. you know and you wanna I just wish there was more money. Mm. Yeah, but uh, speaking of the band, mm-hmm. um, you've, I don't know, it, have, you, have you had any shows, like, super recently? I know you did, like, a whole string, like, you did Boulevardia, and maybe even, like, a several, like, a month or two before that, also? We, we did an album release show mm. the week before Boulevardia, yeah. um, and that show, like, we had kind of done some shows together, but that show was, like, our real, like, coming out. Um, as a band, and I found just really, really talented guys who believe in me enough to, like, practice with me twice a week and, like, just believe in what I'm doing enough to, like, really make it feel like their own along with mine. So I'm just really lucky. Is this the, like, is this, like, this year the first time you've got to play with, like, an actual band or...? Our first show was on the Riot Room patio September 9th. Um, in that, we had four people, including me. And then since we brought in keys, um, done a few changes in the band, but now we're pretty set on the lineup. So we've just been trying to, like, we've been playing a lot. We do uh, a monthly, like, jazz not really jazz, more like lounge singer sort of thing. And we're just, like, getting to know each other and, like, really feeling each other out. And there's things we're working on all the time. Um, Like, there's things I want to change every practice. But it's it's just such a change in the live set than going up there with a DJ and a rapper. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean... You've seen it all. It's just it's a better show, I think. I haven't I haven't caught the. Well, I've seen videos of your your well, I mean, like ba- full band set. Just like bands, as opposed to like a DJ and a rapper. I mean, it doesn't always work, but like if it's yeah. done right, no, yeah, it definitely can like elevate the show to a well, whole different some, place. There's some rappers who you can tell that it's a rapper in a band. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm. But yeah, you just don't want it to feel like an afterthought, you know, like just kind yeah. of throwing someone on stage. Well, it's like, you know, they, you can tell the band is just like sort of, and I told my band that I, I don't want, I want to have, I want to be in a band. Yeah. You know, so we've, we're definitely trying to fight that. Mm. And uh, who who all have you been playing with recently? Like with the band members, like are, are they are any of them in like other groups and stuff like that? So, th- the first guy I initially hit up was name his name is Joe Newman, mm. uh, also known as Scoopy Carlisle, uh, and he is in Hate Shapes, which 
they put out stuff under Intelligent Sounds. Yeah. So he's an Intelligent Sound guy. Um, and then the drummer, Matt Wargen, he was in, he's been in a plethora of projects. He was Earthspun Occupants and he's got his own stuff. He was in Rev Gusto for a little while. And um, the keyboardist also is in Earthspun Occupants and I know him through Matt. And then uh, the bass player, Justin Walker, is in Rachel Mal and the Wild Type. So, um, yeah, like everybody's playing a lot. <laughs> no, yeah, and speaking of Rachel Mallon's band, um, you also did a project with Jesse Bartmess, who was yes. who also pl- used to play with Rachel Mallon before he moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, Jesse's yeah. like my best friend. Mm. So, and, oh yeah, what was working on? Like, because you guys released an album under Bad Bad Dreamer. Bad Dreamer, yeah, uh, yeah. Like late last year, early this year. We released it last year. Yeah. Uh, we released like a really devastating, sad. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> ambient, like chilled out, uh, hip hop pop stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't really make that. We weren't initially. We weren't gonna share that with anybody, but we just decided to share it. I mm-hmm. don't know. It, it it's weird because like secondhand king, I've worked hard to like get it off the ground, and now there's people mm-hmm. and bad dreamer like bad dreamers like it's weird that some people really like bad dreamer and some people really hate it so i don't know it's a weird it's a weird project so it must like you know you're saying you're best friends and like you m- were, weren't even considering like sharing it before so like it must have been like a really like um organic like way that it came about right well, Jesse was going through like a really shitty breakup, mm-hmm. and then I went through a really shitty breakup, and we both made that album as like a survival technique to like <laughs> I don't know if you've been through a really shitty breakup uh you not, can maybe, say yes, maybe not really no <laughs> no it's no. just it just sucks all a lot. Yeah. It's just like you go home and you're like, "What the fuck is wrong with my brain?" And we both sort of had similar situations in a lot of ways. And it's just like, you just, you you feel so isolated. Mm -hmm. And I think me and Jesse both felt that. So I came up with like the hash, the slogan, heartbreak is okay. In that I think, I think the majority of people and someday you even probably, you know, it happens to everybody. Yeah. You, you you hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I not specifically me. No, yeah, I got you. But maybe you listen to the album and you'll like it and you understand it. Mm. Maybe I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I like how I just made your heartbreak my profit. Yeah, because I'm that guy. Yeah. I'll listen to it again <laughs> once once that happens. <laughs> But it's just like you just don't want to feel alone. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have felt that way. And especially going through the heartbreak and like everything, it's like you just, there's a lot of people going through the same shit you are. Mm-hmm. It comes back to connectivity and love and realness. And it's very, very important themes to touch on. Yeah. yeah. Very u- universal. I'd but say. you look for that probably in like people you listen to. Like, oh, yeah. you want to know they're really from the streets or really from the burbs or. What do you What do you think like kids would like? New kids coming up. What would you tell them? You just gotta do do your own thing. Be yourself. <laughs> and I like. And you you. <laughs> you did this last time too. Fucking uh, at the end oh, of yeah, your that's right. show. You're, like I had to come up on the spot with some like slogan about being yourself. I don't want anything on the spot though. I just no, want yeah. I just want something that kind of throws you off a little bit. Yeah, because then no, you yeah. get no, real and shit. That, you, you did you did that in your uh, interview with Stevie too, right? You did, yeah, uh, you're at, having him open up a little bit. That's what what you like to do, I guess. I like to like have yeah. a real moment, break down some some barriers. Yeah, connect. Yeah, what are we doing other than that? Uh, you know, yeah, just you're a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. How many more opportunities are we gonna have to have a conversation? Hopefully, just you and me. Plenty. I hope so. In years to come. 
Yeah. yeah, but like, who knows? Yeah. I could walk out and get hit by a truck tomorrow. Have you seen the show Nathan for you? Yeah. I so appreciate what he does specifically because like the best moments are like when you don't know it's coming. Like, I don't know if you saw the episode where the gas station guy uh, admits to drinking his n- nephew's piss. Yeah. Where, where he had them like climb up a mountain. Yeah. They're like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like that, like that is that's just real man Mm -hmm. not thinking not overanalyzing anything yeah you know that's what i want all the time to to drink uh piss i want to drink piss (laughs) i want to drink my nephew's piss uh we're sponsored today by uh (laughs) uh, joe's nephew's piss uh sponsored by (laughs) young boy's piss jesus (laughs) Be a great punk name, right? Man, I never like <laughs> cut stuff out of this, like due to like graphic stuff, mostly because it doesn't come up. But yeah, I'm really gonna think about that one. I'm gonna show my penis. Hold on, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this thing okay. on? It sure is. Okay. <laughs> um, what else you got? Man, on? whatever I ask next is is just gonna sound like real dumb. I like I like that you have an agenda. And I like that we're trying to get it's, back to the agenda. It's not as much agenda. an agenda as, like, just notes, like, stuff I want to touch on and that you should not be looking at. No. Okay. All right. Look. I won't look at no, it. No, no. It's just Here. it's just for me. You, you can have your own notes, too, if there's anything. I do have my notes. To, yeah. uh, someone on Bumble likes you. Oh. Joe's available. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of available. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, please please um, like this video if you would swipe right and yeah. dislike it. If you would swipe left, which I which only drink left. I don't. Right. I've never actually drunk in young boys piss. <laughs> <laughs> is that gonna be your bio? That should be my bio. <laughs> you know what my bio is? What? Start a conversation and see what happens, because nobody cares about where you've met. Do you think that helps? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I've deleted Bumble three times. But where, I, you know, whatever. What am I doing? Why am I admitting these things on camera? Because you want to connect? Yeah, I want to connect. <laughs> That's why. You want to link and build? I just think I have a problem on Bumble. Do you, do you Bumble? No, I'm, I'm, Are you in, in a relationship? I'm committed, yes. How long have you been with her? Uh, a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. That's great, dude. Yeah, thanks. Before yeah. then, did you Bumble? Uh, I tendered briefly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very strange. Yeah. I... Is, yeah, does, it, that, does that come into your, your feelings about the internet and social media and connectivity it does. at all? Yeah, is that a big... Because, like, yeah. I'll match with people that I like, and then I'll just be like, hmm, this is weird. And then I, most of the time, it's, I just ghost, or they... Or just, you know, it's just the internet. Mm. And... It's just, like, I don't know. It's just weird. I feel like in bigger cities... Mm. Yeah, Kansas City is pretty small in that regard. regard. You'll probably, like, end up running into, like, people you match with, like, more often here than a lot of places. That's very weird. That's a very weird part of Bumble. It's like you'll see somebody you know or you'll see somebody you matched with and then that one of you didn't talk to the other one. Mm. And, like, you'll walk by them, and, like, they'll make eye contact with you. And it's like, what do I go up to you and say, hey, we matched some Bumble? Because uh, I don't think so. I don't have the answers for you. Hopefully, I mean, please have, comment. have you done that at some point? No. Yeah? I, I haven't. Have. But I have walked by awkwardly people that I've matched with. Mm. Especially some, people some that I... eye contact? I, yeah. <laughs> some people that I've ghosted and that mm. it's been a weird walk by. Uh but I won't ghost you, That's, listener. You just said you you have before. What's stopping you from doing it again? Well, because they, if if they're watching this, no, oh. they're they're so, so you, you want to date a fan? I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I want to date your fans. Okay. Yeah, they're all they're they're mostly good people. <laughs> I'd I'd recommend. Are most they most of them? Yeah, for the most part. 
They're not going to break my heart and stuff? I uh, can't make any promises. Okay. Let's talk about music some more. Right, uh, that's a good <laughs> idea. No, but yeah, I was kind of wondering what um, influences, like musical influences really came up when you were working on Bad Dreamer because like it is very different from what you've like kind of traditionally done. So like, were you listening to like a lot of like different music at the time that like you weren't usually into? Yeah, I think definitely. I think, but I oddly enough wasn't listening to like electronic music. Mm. I was listening to uh, Jarvis Cocker, Crocker or Cocker, Jarvis Cocker, who was in the band Pulp and Chili Gonzalez. Mm. They made an album called Room 29, um, and it's like a concept record about it's just piano and vocals, like spoken word, and they just talk about being fucking devastated in a hotel room, some songs, uh, and there's just other things. And I was listening to like a lot of movie soundtracks, uh, specifically Moonlight. I don't oh, know if yeah, you've that seen that. Beautiful film, great great score. That's That score is so incredible, oh, especially yeah. like in the middle of the ocean because it just puts me right back in that situation where uh, of what he was going through. And I think those two specifically are what I was... And then just like regular like breakup shit, mm. like Bob Dylan and, you know, like... I don't know, just... I did a lot of Hank Williams one time. That was Oh, really? Yeah, he's got plenty of, like, sad boy tunes. Dude, under, country he, is like the original underrated. sad boy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's just that, that, like, country, like... There's just something very real about that twang. Mm. Secretly, I have a country album on the internet, too. Do you? Yeah. I'm I'm... Next time I'm I'm browsing, I might you won't find do it. a little. No, I won't. <laughs> no, it's not on Bandcamp. Or it is, but it's not connected. Ooh. I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good at all. Mm-hmm. That's for that'll be for the people to decide. Once yeah. I once I tweet the link to it, and oh god, forward it to everyone. I'll give you a hint. Yeah, the stolen goods. The stolen goods. That's it. Is that a title track? An app? An album name, yeah, we'll, we'll see what's up. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what else did I want to get to here? Um, oh yeah, you, as we referred to before, you have your own podcast, Secondhand City, that you do with Dominico, and I was kind of curious, like, when you, fi- like, were, were you do- doing it alone originally, or was Dominico there for, like, from the start? It started with me, uh... <laughs> recording something in my room at one in the morning. Uh, and it was after I watched Harmontown, a documentary about Dan Harmon and his podcast. And I thought it was really cool. So I did that. And then I was like, all right, this is kind of weird. So then I had Dominico as my first guest and I just had so much fun doing it. that I was like, just Nico, do you want to just like stay? And then it just, he just kept coming and we kept talking to people. And I just had so many, I've had so many real conversations with real people and made real friends just from having a camera and a mic and just having them sit right here. Cause like you don't talk to people at shows. Like I, people, people already have an idea of who you are at shows and then the music plays and you're like yelling over things. And I'm sure you deal with that because you're at a bunch of shows yeah. and, and then, you're a writer. No. Yeah. And then like the person you talked to for like two minutes, like three months ago is talking to you again. I'm like, who is this person? I feel bad. I don't remember. Yeah. And then you just do it again in two months and you're like, oh, how's your thing going? <laughs> it's good. That's good. I'm, like, oh. well, I'm sure people get offended, too, because, like, you're a writer, yeah. so people are like, hey, I'm in a project, this, this, and this. You should write about us. And then, you know, you don't yeah. for whatever reason, even if maybe you, like, get busy. And it's like, that's one, that's a burden that I that I think is, that must be really stressful as a writer. Yeah, it's kind of weird sometimes, but... Because, like, you Just probably gotta, don't want to be friends too much with artists, too. Yeah, at times, yeah. So, 
we're not hanging out after this. You're, oh, we're, we're sending not? you home. No. Okay. Okay. You, you, have, you, have, you have a show to get to. I have a show to get to. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't leave. Oh, that's good. It's <laughs> great. One thing I loved about the Bill Brownlee podcast because mm. I watched that whole thing, mm. uh, and I I really liked. Uh, I loved. I loved. Because uh, I feel like he touched a little bit on like interacting with artists and like Bill Brownlee writes really like he's not afraid to write something negative. Yeah. Um, and like, I think Kansas city needs that. I think Kansas and you know, I think, I mean, there's gotta be something to cut your teeth on or like some like tastemakers. And I know that that's stressful when there's probably people that you really genuinely like that you just don't like their music. Yeah. And, how, I mean, how do you handle that? How do you... Uh, carefully. Yeah. Cautiously. But, you know, I think if someone knows me well enough, they'll know not to take it personally, and it, it doesn't come up super often, at least yet, so it's yeah. nothing I'm super worried about. But yeah, um, I also wanted to ask what like some of your favorite episodes you've had so far were of your show of the city yeah. secondhand city the city the city uh it's having stick figure on mm. was so great yeah, i think he's universally like a great uh radio podcast guest because he's just so cool man yeah uh i just didn't see that coming well, i mean i, did, I haven't, I haven't but... heard that episode yet like what did you guys get into on that one well he was the initial hotbox cookie guy mm. He was like, hey, you guys should try Hotbox Cookies. And we hadn't stopped. We haven't, you know. And he, we, I mean, we just talked about life and, like, he's in Topeka and he never left. And everybody says leave, you know. And he's so, he's super talented. Um, that was really cool. Uh, Reach. Um, when we had Reach on the podcast... And Reach is, like, a Kansas City legend in a lot of ways, like, hip-hop-wise. Like, he... Hip-hop and Hot Wings, like, he was in it. And, like, initially when I first started rapping in Kansas City, Reach was, like, somebody... And he still is somebody that I look up to. Um, and he came on the podcast and just fucking, like, dropped some knowledge. Like, just... And my favorite episodes are, like, the ones that, like, people are just like open like people just talking about their like real life problems and you know i mean i don't think we had any bad episodes um just because you're in my apartment you know i mean what else are we going to talk about and that's mm. i don't think that's what podcast i think that's what i don't know oh yeah no and you you touched on what like one of the things I re I do really like about Stick Figure, which is like, yeah, he's from Topeka, he reps Topeka, and like, even if you're not like the most talented artist, which he is, yeah. like, I there's something in me that like makes me respect people who rep a small town and like don't care about like like yeah they care enough about their small town to rep it super hard. Like hearing people rep like, like, like I know that this rapper I like is from like Springfield, Tennessee. Like you don't hear people like, oh yeah, I'm from Springfield, Tennessee, baby. <laughs> like, like most people in that city the are probably aren't. Uh, his name's Sly C. Okay, I don't know. No, yeah, he's with like Dark World Records. They're really cool. But no, yeah, like I think there's something cool about that. I don't know if that's something you relate to at all. I mean, because Kansas no, City is big great. enough to like build your own thing, but like. If, especially if you're in a city with, like, almost zero infrastructure to, like, be a musician. I, I find that really Kansas admirable. Kansas City kind of... Kansas City sort of, like, has overdone it a little bit, in my personal opinion. In what like, regard? Like, I can't see... I just see so many KC heart shirts and KC hats and... Oh, yeah, that's very NY, funny. KC, LA. It's, like, just fucking cool it mm. you know but i i but stick is super i i am completely on the same boat especially stick like repping um topeka and like because they're because there's stuff 
in every city that's I, it just tells the story better you know mm. like what would I don't know what people do in Wichita I don't know what people do in like Eureka I don't know what people do in those small towns outside of Lawrence Kansas like yeah. with 500 people like what do you do for fun it's really foreign to me and I I feel like music is the connectivity to that mm. I guess I just like to bring everything back to the connection thing. Oh, yeah. I just like to... That's what it's all about. Like, world it back and... No, yeah. I'm like a Disney movie right (laughs) now. You know? Yeah. I'm all Disneyed out. The secondhand king, the uh, Disney prince. I would love to make a musical, Aaron. Yeah. I want to turn Frankie into a musical. Yeah, you got to speak it into existence. Let's, Let's do it. I would love to, to see it. I want to make Frankie a musical mm. right now. Who, who, who are you casting? Who do you, who do you want in I mean, there? I'm in it. You're in it. You're playing the I'll lead. I'll play Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who's your all-star cast? Who do you, who's, who are you bringing in? So the love interest will be Jennifer Lawrence mm-hmm. or... Uh, no, not Jennifer Lawrence. It's a little cliche. Yeah. Yeah, uh, God. Uh, Rooney Mara. Not familiar. Have you seen her? Uh, which which one is that? Like it's the that's where he falls in love with his the phone? cell phone. Yeah, 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 that one. <laughs> Have you seen it? No, oh, yeah. Rooney Mara's the 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 divorcee. Mm. Uh, she, I I would like her to be the love interest, and then I got like I almost got real creepy there for a second. It's like ugh, I'd really like her to be the love interest. <laughs> Swipe right on on, on Bumble. <laughs> uh, it's a film. It's a film. Uh, worry about that. I would love if uh, Joaquin Phoenix played something. Mm. I don't know what he would play. I don't know if he would want to not be the lead. If if I can't be the lead, he's the lead. Nice. So just the her cast. Oh yeah, Come, coming soon to a, a stage near you. That her, would be so great. Her, her Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> and, fo- and Frankie is just. Me falling in love with my I, my tablet. Yeah. Or like my Blackberry. Like an out of date. <laughs> your so your uh what do you call it? Sidekick. My sidekick. <laughs> oh I would it's make that movie. I wanted one of those so bad. You like, never had one? No, I yeah, until I had an iPhone, I just had like real lame like slide phones. Not you never had a, did you have a razor or anything? Mm. Mm. I always wanted a razor. My mom wouldn't let me get one. And now I'm here. You made it. You you have a, a smartphone. We're, Showed we're you, here. Mom. 2018. Yeah, baby. it's got a giant crack on, on the top left. Success. You, you're, you're living life. You've got the, the crack in your phone. You're, crack in my phone. I'm bumbling. <laughs> Right. Oh, man, no, I'm yeah, but here. you were saying you, you, you like using your podcast as a way to, like, talk to people, like, in yeah. a comp- like you know, that... You can't talk to, have, have a great conversation with at a show or elsewhere. Like, just a good excuse for that. So who, who who's, like, a, a future guest that you really want to have? Like, who do you want to sit down with in Kansas City? In Kansas City? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone's been Kansas City I'd love so to far, get, right? I'd love to get Tech 9. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to just sit in a room with Tech 9 and just talk to him about life and, you know... Uh, I'd love to get, um, hmm. I love, I'd love to, to get Marty from mm-hmm. Ebony Tuss. I actually, he, he was on a variation of the show. Yeah. Um, that I don't want to talk about because it sort of isn't, it sort of failed a little mm-hmm. bit, I guess. I don't know. It's a long story. I'm going to spare you the details. Okay. Um, who else? Who else would I, would I... Henry? You know, I, I just want to talk to people that yeah, you seem have, cool. Oh, yeah. Have you had any, like, rock bands or rock musicians on Rachel Mellon was on Oh, yeah, it. Rachel Mellon. Um, and I feel like I... I mean, Jesse did it. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I had other people. Um, I'd love to talk to, like, Steve Tulipana. Oh, yeah. You know, or like 
anybody in the music scene. Yeah, he's got out some stories. Like he's he's been out here for a minute. So. And he's such like a like the first time I got booked. I mean, I'd love to have Bill Brownlee on and just talk to him and just like hear his side of things. Um, Tim Finn, like anybody, anybody that genuinely cares enough. Because it's all about caring and connecting. <laughs> and connect, connecting. Connecting. <laughs> and bumbling. Oh, well, yeah. And I hope we've, we've done plenty ho- enough connecting on today's show. I think we're going to wrap it up here in a second. Um, so, yeah. So. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to get to while you're here? Listen anything to Frankie. Can, listen to Frankie. Listen to Frankie on Spotify. Awesome. Um, it's out there. Cause yeah, we can do some. Oh yeah, go on. I was just saying we can do some plugs here in a sec. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, wait, is this the plug segment? Did yeah, I just I'll jump sh- it? No, no, you can, you can, you can go now. Yeah, it's Frankie. Just listen to Frankie, and then tell your friends if you like it. I, that's the thing. I don't, I don't, I don't. I just want people to hear it. I don't mm. give a shit if you like it or not. Mm. I just want people to hear it. Potentially write about it, whether you like it or not. But at the end of the day, I didn't make that for anyone else. So I don't give a shit if anyone likes it or doesn't like it. Just give it a chance. I understand I'm from Kansas City. I understand that I can be sort of a joke meme sometimes. That, that's my biggest fear, Aaron, is that I'm going to do things that are... Because that, all I give a shit about is you listening to the album mm. in this entire life. That's all I care about. So I, I don't want to do anything that takes away from that or, like, me posting too much on social media. Does that make me look like a hack? I don't think so. But, you know, like, but there's people I know that are not that talented that post on social media every 10 seconds, and it's, like, this, like, struggle. And at the same time, am I a hack? I don't know. I don't, like... I get so caught up in my head about, am I good? Am I not good? What is good? I know that this is the plug segment. This is a great plug. <laughs> this is a, you're, you're really selling it. But just listen to it with open ears. I went through something. I wanted to document it. Listen to Frankie. Awesome. And, yeah, people can follow at Shuttlecock Mag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, visit shuttlecockmusic.com to read all the articles, see the pictures, videos, everything. And shuttlecockmag.bigcartel.com is the web store if you want to buy a T-shirt, photo zine, or button. Uh, w- should people follow you on social media? They should. I mean, yeah. I think yeah. so. Where, I don't where, know. Where, you got? Where, where can they <laughs> follow you? You can follow me on Napster. Uh, I love plugging Napster. I'm on everything. Mm. And I also uploaded Frankie to everything. Mm. Frankie's on YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify. I think it's on Tidal. It's on Pandora. Just like, and if you like the album, follow me on Twitter, at Secondhand King. Um, if you want to know about the pizzeria yeah. uh, and what's going on with that, because exciting lot things. A lot of buzz around town. Getting a lot of buzz. Yeah. Um, and we're going to reach out to Boulevard Beer and try to work in a pizza meatball sub mm. uh, beer. Pizza, pizza meatball, meatball sub beer. beer. That's a great name for it. Yeah. I'm really excited about that Hopefully collaboration. Hopefully it just fits on the label all the way. I'm sure we can make it work. Yeah, you know. Um, Facebook. I'm on that. Yeah. I still don't know what to post. I don't know what you want from me on that. Uh, if anyone maybe has a submission, what what they would like to see Joe <laughs> post, uh, s- send it in. I'm sure, you can email him. I want to be or... vulnerable on social media. Yeah. You know, that's all I want. Uh-huh. I want to be vulnerable on social media. So how do I get there without putting a camera in front of my fucking face? Uh, type in. Yeah, but like on Instagram, what do I do on Instagram? I, that's the thing. I don't. Why do I give a shit? <sighs> God, I hate myself. So there we go. Uh, <laughs> Shakingandking.com. Oh no, yeah, I appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs>